Recently, we've seen more people lose their jobs for their inappropriate behavior than at any other time in history. In an age when perpetrators are being held accountable for their actions, as well as what they say and do, these are the celebrities who were fired due to alleged racism. The late radio personality Don Imus was known for his crude and often racist sense of humor. He got used to skating over controversy and getting away with using his platform to feature some very questionable material. He was even once called the, quote, good-natured racist by the Los Angeles Times. But by 2007, it seemed that everyone had grown tired of his antics. We don't care. <laughs> I, I absolutely don't care. During a segment on his then 30-year-old show, Imus in the Morning, the shock jock called the Rutgers women's basketball team the, quote, nappy-headed according to the New York Times. Immediately, both NBC News and CBS Radio responded to calls for Imus' removal from the radio, suspending him for two weeks. According to NPR, these moves were made permanent by the networks just a couple of days later, likely influenced by the removal campaigns waged by Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. Imus' show was canceled, but he would eventually find his way back on the air. Less than a year later, he returned to radio with a new cast and a new show on WABC. Imus passed away way in late 2019 at the age of 79. Back in 2013, a racial controversy mounted around Paula Deen. It started when a manager of one of her restaurants, Lisa T. Jackson, filed a harassment lawsuit against her. In Deen's testimony, the Southern food personality admitted to using racial slurs and tolerating racist jokes. Deen also spoke about her hopes that her brother Bubba could have had a, quote, Southern-style plantation wedding. This vision was allegedly inspired by a restaurant she had visited in which the all-black serving staff dressed in white dress jackets and black bows. Ties. After the video deposition leaked, the celeb chef was slammed by critics for the revelations. According to the New York Times, the culinary star posted two apologies to YouTube, only the last of which remained. But for the Food Network, it was too little, too late. A network spokesperson announced that they were not renewing her contract. Anthony Cumia was one half of the radio duo Opie and Anthony for nearly two decades, starting in 1995. The show began airing on Sirius XM in 2004 and came crashing down a decade later, at least for Cumia. It was be as outrageous as is humanly possible. People loved when their radio guy got in trouble. According to the radio host, he was taking pictures in Times Square, New York, when a woman who got in the frame assaulted him. He responded with a full-blown meltdown on Twitter. In the now-deleted tweets, which were preserved on Gawker, Kumia lashed out at the woman and her race, calling her a, quote, savage, and declared, there's a deep-seated problem with violence in the black community. They prey on white people. According to the New York Times, Kumia and the show had been in hot water before, but the controversy was too big for a slap on the wrist this time. Sirius XM fired Kumia for his tirade, adding that his behavior was wholly inconsistent with what Sirius XM represents. In March of 2018, Roseanne returned to TV after more than 20 years on the shelf and did so with enormous numbers. According to the Washington Post, the series premiere marked ABC's biggest hour-long telecast since 2006. I'm not afraid of you. Give it time. Unfortunately, the celebration didn't last long. The star of the show, controversial comedian Roseanne Barr, took to Twitter in a now-deleted tweet to describe aide Valerie Jarrett, who is a woman of color, as if the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby. Hours later, ABC swiftly canceled Roseanne, which had already been renewed for another season, citing Barr's remarks. Her agency, ICM Partners, also dropped her. In the following days, Barr fired off a series of tweets explaining and apologizing, most of which have since been deleted, according to Deadline. She apologized to Jarrett, claiming she was, quote, ambient tweeting, and apologized to the actors and writers who lost their jobs in the cancellation. During this time, however, she also responded in shock to her co-stars, like Sarah Gilbert and Michael Fishman, for rebuking her comments, which made fans wonder if her apologies were ever legit. Megyn Kelly is no stranger to controversial comments regarding race. This is, after all, the person who laughed at the suggestion that Santa Claus could possibly be anything other than white, telling the kids at home, Santa just is white. But it was her discussion on blackface that got Kelly fired from NBC in 2018. 
and she made her skin look darker than it really is. And people said that that was racist. In October of that year, an all-white panel on Megyn Kelly Today discussed the appropriateness of blackface for Halloween costumes. Kelly asked, What is racist? You do get in trouble if you are a white person who puts on blackface on Halloween or a black person who puts on whiteface for Halloween. Like, that was okay when I was a kid, as long as you were dressing like a character. Unsurprisingly, shortly afterward, Kelly sent an email to NBC staffers apologizing for her tone-deaf discussion, explaining, I've never been a politically correct type of person. I want to begin with two words. I'm sorry. The following day, she returned to the air and apologized to her viewers, receiving an oddly placed standing ovation for it as well. The day after that, NBC ran a rerun in place of Kelly's show, and the cancellation followed shortly after. Former NHL coach and Canadian-born hockey personality Don Cherry made a living off his unapologetic and brash persona. He often said the first thing that came to his mind and was long celebrated for it. Over the years, however, his brand of nationalistic commentary began to wear on people. During a segment of Coach's Corner in 2019, Cherry gave his last nationally broadcasted rant aimed at immigrants into Canada. He said, "'You people love our way of life, love our milk and honey. At least you could pay a couple of bucks for poppies or something like that. These guys paid for your way of life that you enjoy in Canada." I, I can't stand criticism. One bit. Well, you're in the wrong business. I know. Man. But I can't stand criticism. Cherry has also taken aim at Colin Kaepernick's national anthem protest, and he's mocked and criticized Europeans for years. His stance on immigrants isn't new, either. In a 1990 interview with the CBC, he bragged about his nationalism and complained about immigrants stealing jobs. After his latest comments, however, Cherry was let go by Sportsnet. Company president Bart Yabsley said via USA Today, "...sports brings people together. It unites us, not divides us." Following further discussions with Don Cherry after Saturday night's broadcast, it has been decided that it is the right time for him to immediately step down. Vanderpump Rules did some spring cleaning in June of 2020 and axed four of its cast members for their alleged racist behavior. The cleansing began after former cast member Faith Stowers recalled some of the attacks she faced as the only black person on the show. Speaking on Instagram Live with Candace Rice, Stowers said that the cast was "...calling me names, saying my hair was nappy." She also said that cast members Kristen Doty and Stassi Schroeder decided that she fit the description for a criminal who was on the run and reported her. Stowers said, this woman was robbing people, and they called the cops and said it was me." The uproar from this incident led to the resurfacing of previous racist tweets from new cast members Brett Caprioni and Max Boyens. Both men had apologized and were kept on the show in the past, but they were not afforded the same luxury this time around. A rep told Page Six, "...Bravo and Evolution Media confirmed today that Stassi Schroeder, Kristen Doty, Max Boyens, and Brett Caprioni will not be returning to Vanderpump Rules." It's Bravo saying, we're not, you know, a, a platform that's going to just ignore what's happening in today's society." Shortly before teen mom OG star Taylor Selfridge's new special was scheduled to air on MTV, the network shelved the broadcast. A spokesperson told People magazine, "...MTV pulled the special from its Tuesday schedule and is ending our relationship with Taylor Selfridge in light of her past racist statements on social media. MTV strongly condemns systemic racism and stands with those raising their voices against injustice." According to The Blast, this reaction was in response to a slew of 2012 and 2013 tweets in which Selfridge Bridge wrote disparaging remarks about black people, including one that read, "...we have to greet everyone at work, but sometimes I won't greet the black people because they scare me." But it appeared that MTV had been aware of these tweets for a while. Cheyenne Floyd even confronted Selfridge about them during a Teen Mom OG episode. In a statement posted to her Instagram story, Selfridge apologized for her actions but also suggested that she was the one who backed out of the special, adding, "...I don't believe the reality TV lifestyle benefits me any further at this point in my life." With current events being what they are and reality TV being selective in who they apply rules to or what is considered acceptable behavior, I do not have any further respect." I just had to grow up, yeah. honestly, and I had to, like, experience other places. 
Abby Lee Miller has been the dance instructor for eight seasons of Lifetime's Dance Moms, and if that's not all, the infamously brash coach also had a new Lifetime spinoff in the works. But according to Entertainment Weekly, the 12-episode show called Abby's Virtual Dance-Off was canceled when Miller was accused of making racist comments. Your opinion means nothing. After Miller posted a black square to Instagram in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement, Adriana Smith, the mother of Dance Mom star Cameron, responded on the platform, writing her own post. A statement from Miller that sticks in my mind to this day during my time on season 8 is, I know you grew up in the hood with only a box of 8 crowns, but I grew up in the country club with a box of 64. Don't be stupid. This, to me, shows that you think you are better than me. This is where I think the mothers are absolutely ridiculous. According to E! News, Miller was also accused of derogatory behavior by another mom, Camille Bridges. She claims that her daughter Cameron was cast in a racist light by Miller when she was on the show. Miller has since apologized in an Instagram post. For three seasons, Hartley Sawyer played Ralph Dibney on The Flash, but when a number of horrifying tweets from his now-deleted Twitter account were brought to light, the network and producers took some action. Sawyer had previously tweeted, "...the only thing keeping me from doing mildly racist tweets is the knowledge that Al Sharpton would never stop complaining about me." It's just about equality. And that's what that means to me. It's about being equal and having the same opportunities, the same representation. While he issued an apology on Instagram, Sawyer was ultimately fired in June 2020. Network execs said in a statement to Variety, Hartley Sawyer will not be returning for season 7 of The Flash. In regards to Mr. Sawyer's posts on social media, we do not tolerate derogatory marks that target any race, ethnicity, national origin, gender, or orientation. On May 29, 2020, actress Leah Michelle, best known for her starring role as Rachel Berry on Glee, tweeted her shock at the death of George Floyd and her solidarity with Black Lives Matter. A couple of days later, Samantha Ware, who played Jane Hayward on Glee's sixth season, responded, tweeting in all caps, "'Remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? I believe you told everyone that you would shit in my wig, amongst other traumatic microaggressions that made me question a career in Hollywood.'" You need something to distract from your horrible personality. Most of the time, I find it hard to be in the same room with you." Michelle apologized afterward in a statement, claiming that she didn't remember the exchanges with Ware, and adding, "...what matters is that I clearly acted in ways which hurt other people." That same day, HelloFresh, a brand Michelle had a paid partnership with, ended their relationship with her, and tweeted, "...HelloFresh does not condone racism nor discrimination of any kind. We are disheartened and disappointed to learn of the recent claims concerning Leah Michelle. We take this very seriously and have ended our partnership with Leah Michelle effectively." immediately. We're out of here! Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.